133 degrees Fahrenheit on that surface, and this chameleon was out running in it. Welcome back everyone. In episode 4 of the Madagascar expedition, you watched our team make our way up a mountain in Ranomafana in search of what is arguably one of the most cryptic and incredibly camouflaged animals on our planet. After descending all the way back down, it was time to recharge with a local lunch of zebu and rice. But wait, just when you thought the day was about to end, there is still so much herping to be done. And if you love frogs, you better stay tuned. So Bill, <laughs> Mike, what are we doing here gentlemen? Well, we are slipping and sliding down uh, into a ravine or something to try to look for mantellas. The Mantella yeah. Baroni, or if I'm not mistaken. Baroni? 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 Maybe? Yes. Apparently the habitat is not easy to access, but we really wanted to have a good look at this and see them for ourselves. So we were willing to make the descent. Let's hope we can find them. Wow, this is beautiful. They're this close to water that moves this fast? Yeah, he said to stay here. They don't go anywhere. Okay. Sometimes it flash floods. Wow. Okay, so sometimes it flash floods. So our guides right now are looking for the Antella down there. But they insisted that we don't follow because sometimes it flash floods over here. But this is the habitat that they live in. Okay, let's go in there. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Painted Mantella. Oh yeah, look at Alec. He's just excited. Okay. If we were going to find a Mantella, it had to be okay. now. The clock was ticking as the sun was about to set. Finally, success. We found a few Mantellas, but these guys are incredibly hard to catch. Never mind their small size. They're so good at deking you out. Until we found this individual, who seemed to cooperate a little bit better, but still, made a few cheeky runs for it. Dirty again. Because it has been pretty stressed out. A little behind the scenes here, it can be really challenging coaxing animals into the right position to be filmed properly. You're constantly trying to make sure that the animal isn't too stressed, and in the Mantella's case, this animal has a very small body, so we had to be very careful not to keep it in our hands too long, which could warm it up to a dangerous temperature. Therefore, we tried to minimize handling, and whenever it was prolonged, we would rinse our hands in the river's fresh, cooler water to help lower the temperature that the frog's body was exposed to. In preparation for handling amphibians on our expedition, Alec and I also packed latex-free rubber gloves. This would prevent the harmful oils that are in human skin from being absorbed by these delicate little amphibians. When you find a frog, we need to have the frog flipped on its back, which you can do by gently inducing uh, tonic immobility, which is you just gently turn the animal onto its back and it usually will just lay there and have a photo of the actual underside of the frog because that is like that's such an important feature or set of features to identify the species, especially in Mantella the, the, the Madagascar frogs. As you can see, there's so much to consider when handling and filming these animals. Mantella, or Malagasy poison frogs, are endemic to the island of Madagascar. These frogs are an example of convergent evolution, the evolution of similar traits between species of different lineages. Like the Dendorbatidae family in Latin America, Mantella also possess characteristics such as bright dramatic coloration that warn predators of toxic alkaloid secretions in their skin. All in all, an incredible frog that we got to see. Take care, little one. Be on your way.
Okay everyone, we're out doing some nighttime herping again. This is our third night in Ranomafana. I'm joined here with Bill and the rest of our group. And this is a very interesting chameleon. Bill, remind me, this is a Fursifer... Fursifer Baltiatis. Baltiatis. Listen to what Bill has to share with you about why this is a very unique animal. This is a Fursifer, like the panther chameleon. And generally speaking, those first furs like to be outside of the deep forest, generally speaking. And the Kalumas, like the Parsons chameleon, like to be a little bit more in the deep forest. But this is a first fur that acts like a Kaluma. There's a couple of uh, first furs that do that. But you can uh, just take a look at him and you might just assume he's kind of part of the uh, Parsons genus, but he's not. He's, uh, he's related more to the panther chameleon than the Parsons. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the characteristics? That yeah, you've got some of these incredible rostral processes yes. here at the end of his... Pretty long. Uh, yeah, on the end of his snout. And look at that tail. Uh, one of the adaptations of these deep forest chameleons is they, they have these very long tails mm -hmm. that allow them to navigate the trees and, uh, mm -hmm. and be able to hold on. And the reason why many people have never seen this or even heard about this is because uh, it doesn't come into captivity. It doesn't come into the trade. And so uh, if you want to see it, generally you have to go to Madagascar. Super, super interesting. Wow, we're very lucky we found this lizard. Thanks for yeah, sharing. This is a rare one. This is a great find. Thanks, Bill. Absolutely. Thank you. Searching further into the same tree we found the male animal in, we actually were able to observe a female two-banded chameleon. Again, so lucky to find both male and female representation of each species, but what a gorgeous animal. Check out those beautiful bluish markings. As the rain picked up, we were thinking about heading back, but we continued to look through trees with our headlamps. And good thing we did, because we stumbled across a beautiful Sanzinia madagascariensis, Madagascar tree boa. Again, I really wish these animals were more available in the Canadian hobby, or at all, to be honest. I don't think they are. They're just stunning snakes. We've seen more Sanzinia today than all of Canada has, as far as I know at least, but what a crazy thought. Further down the road, we shone a light into a jackfruit tree that had a large male Kaluma parsonia yellow lip individual. This guy was bigger than the ones we saw on our hike a few days ago. He was enormous. Take a look. I like this. What do you have there? Oh yeah. This impressive chameleon was determined to make his way back into the tree he was sleeping in, and he was gonna do it any way possible by climbing onto my head. Let me tell you, those nails really hold on tight, and they, they dig. It's not a very fun feeling. So we let him go back to sleep, and we did the same thing. We went back because we have a long day ahead of us. The Madagascar Expedition is brought to you by Exoterra. Make your reptiles feel at home. Whether it's beautifully designed terrariums for housing your animals, feeding and nutrition, products that nourish your pets and help them find their food easier, substrates and habitat decor that allow you to create the most beautiful naturalistic looking homes for your animals, heating, lighting, and more. Exoterra has a wide selection of innovative products that allow hobbyists to successfully keep their reptiles. Exoterra makes it possible to cater to almost any species from almost any specialized habitat. Thank you again to my friends at Exoterra for sponsoring the expedition of a lifetime. All right, Mike. We're about to depart for our next destination. Breakfast first. Yeah, making our way downtown, walking fast. Walking What's the next entirely time? straight down the mountain. And I'm homebound. Do, 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 do. You gotta see the view we're looking at though right now. Yeah, look at that. Merci. Merci. Incredible. You got your pill? Yep. Thank you for reminding me. My malaria pill.
everybody. We just drove by that same place we were doing our night herping. That was that tree boa skin we found. Is it fresh? Or is it old? Or is it, can't you tell because it's been raining? I'm not sure. Because if that's fresh, I'm going cross country up there until I find it. And funny enough, the animals in the same area here basking were driving by and noticed her. That is so cool. Yeah, the lump in its stomach is a lot lower down. Oh, Sid the Sloth. We stopped in a nearby city to exchange some money. Oftentimes, children would come up to the vehicle, at which point we would show them some funny filters. It was always good laughs and lots of joy. As we traveled further south towards Fienaranzu, the environment around us was becoming a lot more arid, open, dry, and yeah, very hot. You see all those bodies of water down below? Those are all rice fields. That's a large rice plantation, and it illustrates just how important rice is as a stable food source for the Malagasy people. Okay guys, so we're cruising along here, making our way to our next destination, and our eagle-eyed friend here, well, Dave, tell us what happened. Well, I don't know if they're eagle eyes, they're maybe like more like Canadian geese eyes, oh, that I or can duck to. eyes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm saying, I'll just explain what happened. So we're cruising down the road, and uh, I happen to see this big dude just start to cross the road here. And it is blistering hot out here. As a matter of fact, I just I just temp zoned the street, and uh, that pavement is 132 degrees Fahrenheit. This guy was out running across this hot road, and I mean he was running. He was like iguana speed. I've never seen a chameleon move that fast. We always think that chameleons are slow moving, very methodical. This guy was booking it. I've never seen one run that fast. That was pretty cool. I don't blame him for wanting to get off that <laughs> hot, hot yep. pavement. But the, yeah, so this is the Malagasy giant chameleon, or the Furcifer ustaleti. And Bill here is going to give us a little bit of information on how incredible this species is. All right, so this species here is going to be a good example of how a, a, some chameleon species are able to adjust to human encroachment. Uh, this is a first fur. First fur tend to be uh, good at that. And if you look around us, there are no trees. There's just these short shrubs. And this guy is obviously very healthy. And that's one reason why they are so common. This is a male. You can see his tall cask here and his hemipenes down there. And this is an adult, uh, one of Madagascar's larger chameleons. After several more hours of driving south, we finally got to Fianaransu. Nadim, how you doing? We're about to have a traditional Malagasy lunch. And after that, it's Lima time. Right there, okay? And this is the kitchen in here? After eating a delicious meal, it's time to embark on a magnificent hike. Look at this view everyone, it's truly something out of this world and we're told that we're going to find several of our favorite target species. Adam here is very excited because this is one of his favorite reptiles he keeps at home. But that'll have to wait until next week's episode. Thank you all so much for watching.